Hey, howdy, howdy, everyone. Tad Stevens on the Micro Success Secrets podcast, where we focus on business psychology and marketing and how you can use that in your business daily and long term. Today, I'm talking with Jessa Wilson and Nat Peters, who co-founded uh, Power of Her, a transformative company focused on female empowerment, life and business coaching. It's their mission to help women overcome self-limiting beliefs, define success on their own terms, and manifest the life of their dreams. Jessa is an energetic, caring, and transformative coach, business owner, entrepreneur, keynote speaker, and director of marketing operations and analytics at Canada Life. She has multiple certifications, including registered corporate coach, certification and associate certified coach, and also an MBTI certified practitioner. Nat grew up as the daughter of an entrepreneur and was involved in a family business from a young age and developed a strong passion for business. With a degree in business communications and postgraduate education in human resources management, she spent much of her corporate career in training and development roles. Nat, Jessa, welcome to the show and let me know if I missed anything. Thank you so much for having us, Tad. We're so excited to be here and, and I, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head. You know, we are um, very much based on mindset, energy, and action. Those are kind of the three things we focus on with our uh, audience, and we're so excited to talk about it here today. Okay. And I'm going to add in one thing for Nat, uh, because one of the things uh, that makes her a, st a stellar female coach is she actually is the owner and president of Top Franchise Broker as well. And that's how we connected. So um, she has a, a wealth of knowledge in the business world and the entrepreneur world. And um, we tap into her for that expertise frequently. So I just want to call that out for her. Super. Excellent. And thank you. So I think, Nat, you said you were going to go first. So if you could go back in time, so you get in a time machine, you go back and you could look at all the decisions you've made. And if you could change one business or life decision, and it could be two, but if you could change one, first off, would you change it? And second, if you would change it, what would you change it to? Now, there's very little I would change well, looking back, um, but, but there's definitely a few pivots I, I would make. <laughs> um, and the biggest one is, I've, like you mentioned in my bio, you know, I've been in the business world since I was very young. And I always, since I was about five years old, I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I knew I wanted to own not only one business, but multiple businesses. Like I am just obsessed with business in general. Um, but I've always been, because my dad is my mentor, he's the one that, that kind of introduced me to this entrepreneurship world. I've always been in this very masculine um energy when it comes to business you know like mm -hmm. i when it comes to sales i've done the sales coaching the marketing kind of like the technical stuff but the one thing that i actually never explored um always heard about but kind of pushed it to the side was this kind of the, the the feminine side the feminine energy when it comes to um really focusing on you know my desires what I want um, and the mindset piece. Like I never understood how important that mindset piece is. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think if I learned that earlier on, not only would I have um, been more successful, but I also think I would have enjoyed the journey a lot more. Okay, super. Jessa, anything you want to add to that from your perspective or you want to go, you want to go to the next question? Yeah, I'm going to go to the next one. I, I wouldn't, I there's nothing I think uh, I would I can think of off the top of my head that I would change. I've learned a lot of lessons and uh, other people might call, have regrets. Uh, they've made me who I am. So I I rely on those lessons so strongly and they've created the wisdom and the space and the energy that's gotten me to where I am. Mm -hmm. And just to let the two of you know, and if uh, people that have listened to the show before, that is the most common answer is most people would not change it because they understand that it got them to where they are, made them who they are. The one thing that people would think, I think that Nat uh, alluded to is that they might do it a little quicker. You right. know, other than that, they, they, you know, they, they, they're happy where they are. So, and I would agree with Nat is finding, I would add enjoyment along the way as much okay. as I could have. Well, yeah. okay. So here's a good one for you then. Um, if you could go back, same time machine, different time machine, but for you, do you have one decision that turned out to be super positive? It's one of those things, you know, where you can like look at everything before and after. It's kind of a dividing line. Do you have one of those that you could share? 
I do. And it could have been one that I gave the answer of, I wouldn't have done it as well. So my husband and I purchased a franchise from that. Um, so mm-hmm. we print, purchased a franchise called Driver It Wizard. And the first three years of that um, taught me a lot about business, about entrepreneurship. And that decision and a lot of decisions along the way to stay invested in that business and to keep going framed up everything I needed to know to go into business for myself as an entrepreneur. I learned so much by watching my husband and I grow, the business grow, and my husband grow as an entrepreneur. Uh, and I learned a lot about me and what I what scared me and what I was uncomfortable with that actually gave me the freedom to go again and add to our are what's becoming a plethora of businesses. So the best decision we made was to go into entrepreneurship. And then, and then what I think people don't realize it's a lot of decisions. You make a decision to stay in entrepreneurship every day Mm -hmm. through. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. I I laugh because I, (laughs) this has been one of those days that, yeah, I'm choosing to do this. Right. (laughs) I, I, I think I think that's one of the things that I see a lot with my clients is, you know, they get into this business and they get so excited. And then that first year, really the first two years are tough because that's mm-hmm. when you're learning. That's when you're failing. That's when, you know, you're really figuring out what works and what doesn't work. And I find that so many people give up in those first two years where if they just kept kind of watering the grass like that, that's when it really starts blooming and coming up and, and uh, but not everybody has that perseverance and that trust that it's going to work out to actually stick with it. So I'm so glad to see that Jessa and her <laughs> husband did because now now they're doing fantastic and it's it's amazing to watch. Mm-hmm. And so that kind of leads into the next question is, and this is for either one of you really, um, what decision did you think you've made in the past turned out to be the scariest? Huh, I think for me back I would have thought back in the day um you know quitting my corporate job like deciding to actually yep. leave that security right everybody talks about the benefits of being an entrepreneur how they want to be an entrepreneur but very few people actually have the courage to leave the comfort of that corporate job that you mm-hmm. know paycheck that comes in on a regular basis um and actually jump into it and I remember making that decision was scary because you don't know what's on the other side um yeah. but then on the other hand, the funny thing is, and I know I've talked to Jess about this before, is I still to this day remember the exact day that I walked out of that corporate building for the last <laughs> time. And uh-huh. I thought I would be so scared. And I wasn't. Like, I was just so excited thinking, like, this is where my, my new life starts. Like, this is where I start following my dreams. And I just had so much excitement. But actually making that decision to quit the job and handing in that resignation. Like I still remember my heart pumping going into my manager's office to hand that in. Um, that was so scary at the moment, but now looking back at it, you know, what, once I actually did it, then that's when, where my excitement began because then I, I mm-hmm. got over that big, scary decision and then I could start living and, and, and dreaming and really being in control of my life and my career. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So and this is related to that. And Jessa, you may want to jump in on this and share your scary uh, decision if you have one. Is what helps or what helped either one of you in that situation when you know when your heart was pounding, when you knew that something big was coming up? What helped you get through that? You know, a lot of people stop. A lot of people go off in another direction uh, to keep going and to feel through that situation, that moment in time. What do you do, or what can you? Is there anything that you can share with the listeners about what do you do when you come up to those situations? So for me, this actually does blend my answers. So for me, the scariest thing I think I ever found as a woman was deciding to speak my truth and deciding to step out there and be all of me and to whether Mm -hmm. that's doing my own thing as an entrepreneur or just daily in my daily interactions, showing up fully as me. And the scariest thing is to to say what about me, to say it's my turn, to say I matter, to choose yourself. That's a very scary space for every human to enter into. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And then how to get yourself through that is always what we teach is in little phases, right? Do the next small manageable thing. 
So what is your speaking your truth today, showing up as you choosing yourself today? Today, it might be you decide to write with the, your favorite color pen. That might be a stretch for you. Tomorrow, five years from now, it might be you walk out of the corporate world. It might be you walk into the corporate world. It might be mm -hmm. you ask for that raise. But it's starting with what's the next smallest thing I can do that speaks my truth, that, that is from a desire of me, that puts me first and allows me to show up. Okay. Nat, you got anything to add? Yeah, so I, that we talk a lot about that, you know, kind of moving, it's the 1% rule, you know, I'm moving 1% closer to what you want. Um, mm -hmm. what, and, and that's, you know, how you, you get started. I think that's with a lot of our clients, you know, when they're struggling to get started, like, okay, just do something small, like, like Jess was saying. When it comes to the big decisions, like for me, when it came to quitting my job, a big part of it was trust right? Like trust in me that I have what, what it takes to be successful. And if it doesn't work out for whatever reason, knowing that I have options, right? Trusting that something better will come up. I remember my husband said something to me that really calmed my nerves when it came to this whole thing. And, and he said to me, he said, okay, so what's the worst that can happen? And I was like, well, what do you mean? I can fall flat on my face and then we can go broke and we can like this and this and this. And he goes, okay, so, so what? And then what? I was like, well, then we're going to be broke and then I'm not going to have a business and it's like and then what I was like well I don't know then I have to go back to the corporate world he goes okay do you think you can find another, another job and I'm like oh yeah absolutely you know I I know that I can mm -hmm. do you yeah. think you can find a job that would make you happier than you are right now I'm like yeah absolutely I can definitely do that like so your worst case scenario is that you try to follow your dreams and if it doesn't work out forever for whatever reason you go back to the corporate world into a job that you like more <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then it clicked and I was like that that's actually genius you're right that is not so scary after all mm -hmm. okay well super and kind of in this to shift it a little bit to the um some of the people that the two of you serve is what do you is is that kind of what you tell them to take little steps what do you tell them when you're coaching them if you are coaching them in getting through these tough things because a lot of people that I talk to when they talk about their scary thing that they're having to do or a tough decision or someplace they get stuck and they can't get unstuck. And in talking to them, I can just see it. it they've made it so big that, yeah, no wonder you can't get through it. The thing's huge. But Jess, I like what you said, just, you know, a little bit, just a little step, chopping away at it just a little bit at a time. Is that kind of what you coach people with? or how do Yeah, you well, the number one thing we always say to those people is get yourself coach because we have blind spots that we can't see, right? You, you're mm -hmm. just, you're never going to see your own blind spots. It's just, it's humanly impossible. So when you're stuck and when you're looking to grow and when you're looking to get that next level, get yourself a coach, get to a space. If you really want to challenge yourself and level up, that's where coaching comes in because it pulls out different ways that we take you through change methodologies that are scientifically mm -hmm. proven. But when you are coaching yourself in those moments, it is, it is really important to start small. We see women that come into our world and they're at this space where they're like, what happened to me? Like, where did I go? And I was talking mm -hmm. to my husband, same, and he's like, oh, that happens to men too, you know? Like, oh, right, right, right. <laughs> it does. <I'm, laughs> right? Does so you wake up and you're like, okay, I got the job. I got this. I got this. And it's like, you were on autopilot. And sometimes you have this day where the autopilot switches off and you're like, how'd I get here? I right? Yeah. Exactly. And uh, that's where they come to us and they're like, I don't know what to do now. And we literally smart smart we start small we say what shirt do you want to put on today what pen do you want to write with we literally start with start remembering who you are what you want listening to your own voice putting yourself okay. first we have such a stigma in society about what selfishness is mm -hmm. and it's so taboo to put yourself first we've built a martyr society that that is killing people the men mental health crisis is huge. We're teaching people to put themselves last, to not think about themselves and to just give and give and give until there's nothing left. Mm -hmm. But the thought of going from zero to a thousand is paralyzing. Yeah. So how do you pick the tiniest thing that is for you that day? Maybe today you're getting out of bed. Maybe tomorrow you're getting out of bed and getting dressed. 
Mm -hmm. Right? Well, if it's in a bigger context, it's bigger. But what's, what, what works for you? And what I love about that is it fits because I, I love certain parts of Eastern philosophy and the, the Chinese saying or proverb that every journey starts with a step. Mm -hmm. And I see so many people that they just won't take the first step. Just yes. take the first step. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it was the same thing concept when it comes to like running a marathon, for example, you're not going to, people think they're just going to go out there and just run the full marathon. And that's just not feasible if you've mm -hmm. never ran before, but for some reason, when it comes to business, that's what, people, what that's what people expect, which is, which is the scary thing. So um, I, I focus a lot on entrepreneur coaching and, and that's what we spent a long time talking about is like, okay, what are those little steps in between? Cause like Jessica was saying, 95% of our actions on a daily basis are subconscious. Mm -hmm. which is terrifying so we really spent a long time bringing awareness to people because once you're aware of the things that you're doing your thoughts and how they're affecting your everyday life that's when you can actually begin to change them yeah okay super Hi. so this gonna pivot a little bit here uh getting close to wrapping up and because and Jess, it kind of goes back to what you were just saying about uh, selfishness and how it's misunderstood and how we've turned it into something that that it's really not um what do the two of you want out of your business what do you <laughs> want to get out of why and, I, and the other way i put this is I always tell people that you know think about it and what gets you out of bed in the morning because at the end you know after several years getting out of bed to go make money gets kind of old so why is it that you know you you know you jump out of bed Last week, I didn't really want to get out of bed. It wasn't a good week for me. This week's turning around a little bit. I'm ready. You know, I got, I jumped up at 5 a.m. this morning. So what is it for the two of you? What gets you going? Oh, my gosh. How much time do we have? Okay. Uh <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, I'll speak a little bit, and then I know that will add her flavor for sure. Um, like, we we always say that we, you know, we obviously get notes and cards and all, all the feels and all the thank yous from our clients. And we always say to them, like, we get more out of this than you, I assure you. Okay. Like the, the intrinsic reward, the feeling of, of helping women take their life back of, of seeing them have a new job or a, a new that, you know, have that co important conversation or look in the mirror and like what they see, like it, that reward, like you, it's a high, like nothing else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Nat and I love making money also. And we do <laughs> not hold that back on that. We actually mm -hmm. have a workshop on Thursday talking about women and making money and how taboo it is to say, I like money. We like mm -hmm. making money. We want to change women's lives. We want to change the world by putting money in the hands of women. And one of our biggest dreams is to have a transitional housing um, center for women and provide them coaching and psychology services. Like um, we want to shape the world and help people understand you can have money. You can jump out of bed. You can be so excited for money. You can be so excited to help and change lives. And it doesn't have to be this or that. You mm -hmm. can yeah. have it, be it all and do it all and have a good heart and hold all the wealth. And that's what gets us out of bed is because we get to teach that and we get to just free women from the confines that are there. Okay. Excellent. Nat, how about you? I, I will just, just I covered all, all of it for the most part. She um, already took it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. This, this, this happens. No, we, uh, <laughs> she hit the nail on the head though. Like we just, we want it all. Like we want to be able to have this amazing business where we reach as many women as possible and make a difference in their lives. But we also want to make sure we're enjoying our life with it. I, I find mm -hmm. one of the yeah. things that a woman, we're often told you can't have it all. You know, you can't have a family and a successful business. You can't right. love money and be selfless. You can't like, there's just so many things that are conflicting, conflicted that we've been told. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we want to, we want to address those things. And we want to make sure that women are li literally living their best life. Um, and we can do that while we're living our best life. Like I think for both Jess and I, because we have other businesses and other priorities that we focus on, like this is almost like our, our fun because this is literally we're truly where our passion lies. So, um, but you know, for those days, like even though we love this business, like you said, there's days where you just don't want to get out of bed. <laughs> yeah. 
And, and that's fair. You know, the biggest, well, two things I would say. One, I'd go back to, you know, why did you start this in the first place? You know, what motivated you to start it in the first place? Mm-hmm. Um, and two, make sure that you're running the business in a way that actually fulfills you. So yes. I, like last week, I, I struggled. Like you, last week, I really struggled. And there was multiple days where I'm like, you know what? Taking the afternoon off. I did a road trip with the family, unexpected. Mm-hmm. Another day, I just, I did a few emails in the morning. I shut everything down, told the kids not to do school. And we just spent the whole day by the pool. And sometimes you just need those days to recharge because yep. if you constantly go, 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 you will burn out. So you need, you need to make sure you're balancing that the pleasure and the work. And, and that's where I think, especially when you start a business, especially in those first few years, that's mm-hmm. where a lot of entrepreneurs burn out. Because they're just go, go, go. They just want more, 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 more. They want to make more sales. They want to do more of this, but they're not actually taking care of themselves. Right. They're yeah. Doing they're doing it. So um, you need to make sure you're balancing both the pleasure and, and the business, the actual work. All right. Excellent. Time to wrap up. Wrap up. Thank you both very much for sharing. Um, before we do, though, is there anything that you'd like to close with? Anything that you want to offer the listeners and viewers that would benefit them? I, I just think is, you know, we're, we're here and we, you know, you've heard our passion for what we do. Um, we'd love to invite you to check us out at um, powerofher.co and, and um, you know, reach out if you have any questions or like to chat because we would love to meet you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Come, come join. We also have a Facebook community uh, for Power of Her. So please check us out on there. And I do have to um, let you know about our new membership that we have going on. So we, uh, some of our programs are more, you know, kind of higher, higher end pricing. So we really wanted something to suit everybody, something that everybody could join. So we have an amazing mm-hmm. membership for $33 a month uh, that anybody can join. And you get a live workshop from us every single month, as well as some journaling prompts and other amazing things. So you can find out more about that on the website or if you join our community and reach out. Okay, super. And I will make sure that all of that information plus how to get to wherever it is, is in the show notes and also in the description, wherever we post the, the audio or video. Uh, thank you to again, really appreciate your time and sharing. Thanks everybody for listening. Have thank a safe and productive week and be the very, very best in whatever it is everybody is doing. And this is Tad Stevens with Jessa and Nat, uh, Micro Success Secrets. Bye for now.